All right, this time, last thing we need to talk about, of course, is B. Now, B is the coefficient of your x value uh, before you do your parent function. And anytime you have a B, you're going to have a horizontal stretch or shrink. So it's actually the opposite of what A was. So if you're, for A, if your absolute value of A is greater than 1, you have a horizontal stretch. Well, here, now what happens is if the absolute value of B uh, is greater than 1, you have a horizontal shrink. That, I hope I said A is a vertical uh, stretch. This is a horizontal shrink. Where if your B value is a fraction or decimal, positive or negative, in between 0 and 1, you're going to have a horizontal stretch. So again, just like the other ones, it's actually going to uh, move your graph. It's going to affect the horizontal shape of your graph. Now, just like A, we also can have a reflection. So if B is negative, it's going to reflect about the y-axis. And what that means is that you're basically fold about the y-axis, and the points will go from one side of the y-axis to the other. Uh, so in your function, it'll look like this. It'll be uh, the coefficient of x before you do the principal function. So B divides the x value. Remember, A and D had a direct effect on the y value, where uh, B and C will have an inverse effect to the x's. So keep that in mind, and we'll look at an example. Here we have this. Uh, for starters, you, some of these, based on the shape of the graph, if you affect it horizontally and vertically, you may not be able to tell. So if you look at this one, like x squared, if we say that uh, g of x is 4x squared, then you might think that this is an A, and that's going to cause us to have a vertical stretch. Well, a vertical stretch, and this would actually be a horizontal shrink, okay, are going to have the exact same effect. So some of these things, you know, same thing if I give you something like this, where I say, hey, you've got um, uh, x squared. Okay, well, if we make it negative x squared, Okay, that's actually going to reflect about your y-axis. Well, when you, when you rotate a parabola about the y-axis, if I took this and flipped it about the y-axis, it's not going to change the effect of our graph. And it should make sense because when you square negative x, you're going to end up with the exact same thing. So let's see if we can't look at some examples of b here. So this time we're using the absolute value function. So f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And I just plugged in some ordered pairs. So the absolute value is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, negative 1 is 1, negative 2 is 2, negative 3 is 3. So that gives us our brown function right here. And then what we're doing is we're looking to see what effect does this have. So now we have a B of 2. So if you look, when we plug these values in, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. If I plug in 0, okay, well 0 times 2 is still 0, the absolute value is 0, 0. When I plug in 1, Okay, I actually get 2 times 1 is 2, and therefore the absolute value of 2 is 2. All right, So you can see we get some different values. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to look and see what matches up. So if you have some ordered pairs, uh, say our original ordered pair was this, uh, for our Brown function 2, comma 2, and 4, comma 2, well, the y values are not going to change. Okay, So if you take this 2, and in here, since b is 2, you're going to divide the x value by your b. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the corresponding point for 2 comma 2 is going to be 1 comma 2 with our g function. If you take the order pair 4 comma 4 from our original function, okay, and you take this b and divide it into the x value, 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2 comma 4. So that's going to be the corresponding point from this point right here. And then uh, same thing here, 3 comma 3 will be 3 halves comma 3. So as you can see, uh, here is our g of x, and what it does, it's, it's basically uh, has a horizontal shrink. So we're basically taking this graph and pushing it from this side and this side, and it causes it to look like this. Now, this could also be very similar to a vertical stretch. So you'll see that on some functions, especially if they're symmetric about the nice little x or y axis, um, or not the y axis, but the x, I mean not the x axis, but the y axis. You'll see some of those examples. And let's look at another one. So now we have h of x is equal to 1 half x. So now we have a b of 1 half. So when you uh, have a b of 1 half, what you're really doing is you're taking the values and you're going to uh, divide this into the corresponding values. So 2 comma 2, if you take 2 and you divide it by 1 half, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, where the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So that corresponding point is going to be 4 comma 2. 
4 comma 4, if you take 4 and divide it by 1 half or multiply by the reciprocal of 2, you get 8 comma 4. So those are going to be the corresponding points, and you can do that with all these uh, nice little values here just by plugging them into your parent function also. And you can see what happens, it does this. So it basically took this function, and now it's pulling from both of these sides. So that's basically it's going to have what we call a horizontal stretch in a graph like this. There's some examples, and now we'll see if we can't put them all together and use uh, all of them.